the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Looking for spinner baits. You know where they are? Spinner baits, spinner baits, spin There they are. Spinner baits, spinner baits. Spinner baits. Laser eyes. You know, I guess you can tell from our title what our show is all about today. Yep, it's all about questions you've sent in, and I'm gonna do my doggone best to answer every dead gum one of them to the best of my ability as we fish along today. Like this one, right here. Of all the soft plastic lures used on the Carolina rig, what's the most popular? Well, believe it or not, most of them will work, but the most popular used is the plastic lizard. Right at the boat. Strong fish, boy. Strong fish. You got double hooked, didn't you? What are you thinking, huh? You thinking you want to go home? I'm going to let you. Bye bye. Okay, here's one about sight and sound. Would you not agree two of the most important factors in attracting a big bass are action and sound? In attracting a big bass, action and sound are paramount. Those two things are most important. First of all, smell and sound are important, but not nearly as important as sight. A bass may hear an offering, but he needs to see it to eat it, and action is the key. When fishing for really big bass, it's smart to curtail all noises that are abnormal to fish. Surprisingly, this includes many of those lures that shake, rattle, and roll. Sure, giant-sized bass will strike a noisy lure intentionally, simply because of its protective instinct. However, I honestly believe lures that make no noise and can be worked slowly, like plastic worms, tubes, lizards, grubs, crawfish, jigs, with plastic attractors, and creature baits are much more effective on huge bass. Lures that create no negative cues like the ones mentioned have less chance of rejection because the bass relies on what its eyes tell it, not what its eyes or ears relate. When I think back of the really big bass that I've been fortunate enough to catch, most have been caught on quiet, slow moving baits. Bottom line is, you only have to fool their eyes. Remember, to catch a bass of a lifetime, use repeated casts and slow retrieves with lures that look and act very natural. Now here's a question a fellow asked me recently. When it comes to fishing rods, are power and action the same? Well, not really. A rod's action refers to the amount of bend in the rod from the tip to the butt section. Now power describes the rod's overall stiffness or resistance to bend. It has nothing to do with action. Yeah, I oh, got him somewhere. Just full of grass. Oh, you're going to make me come to the back. Nice. Okay. Toodaloo. Thank you. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel. 
catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Today's conditions log is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Got it on top. You through with yourself? I see you. Come on back. You liked that, didn't you? Long old slanky baby. Yes, you are. Okay, here's a mighty good one about water quality on small waters. What do you consider to be the most important factor in the success of a small fishing lake? If you want your fishing lake or pond to be all it can be, you've got to have good water quality at the forefront of your management plan. First, water quality increases fish survival rates, and second, it makes for a healthier lake from top to bottom. Aeration creates a more enriched environment. It doesn't take much to make a lake look pretty, if that's what you want, but to make it fertile and very fishable, well, that requires management and it starts with good aeration. Like the good folks at Vertex Water Feature say, by assuring good oxygen content, you prevent a lake from forming a strata. Basically, you make a great percentage of your lake productive for the fish we love to catch. You know, I couldn't agree more. Aeration is a health insurance policy of a sort. It can help prevent fish kills in those oh-so-hot summer months. It's counterproductive to grow all those wonderful fish and let them fall victim to poor water quality, something you could avoid by having a good aeration system. Hey Bill, tell me about this new anchor feature on your trolling motor. Well, let me tell you, it's a pretty neat deal. From anywhere in your boat, you're able to control it. All you need is a handheld device like this right here, or a wireless foot pedal. The motor rotates 50% faster than a minnow can jump a dipper. Now, one of the anchor functions that I really like are, when you locate fish on your graph, press the anchor symbol on the handheld control and you'll remain anchored within a foot or so even in wind or current. This is a great, great feature, especially for vertical jigging or freelining a bait with the current. When you hook up, being able to hold and stay on the fish is a priceless benefit, I'll tell you. Whoa, get out of that grass. Strong little old fish right there. Nice. You really want these blades to reflect. Throw them and pull them back against the sun. Well, that blade is. Pulling it into the sun, you'll get a lot more reflection off the blade than you will pulling it against the sun. In other words, I'm throwing it right there. I've got it shallow right there. You can see it waking. 
and I'm pulling it directly towards the sun. The sun's shining directly on that blade, and boy, it's just reflecting. I can see it just throwing light every which way. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination. And Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's show is sponsored in part by Strin, the standard of dependability since 1958. Lurlock, turning the tackle world upside down. And Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Good one. Where are you? Whoa! I thought he was further out than he was. You! Okay, quit all that. That I'll ease you up here. A good round band hook. Okay, long and lanky. It's, here we go home. I promise you, we're using Bass Pro Shops half ounce laser eye willow bladed spinner bait. It's got a little Colorado blade right here and a big willow blade right here. This is a great, great combination using for what we're doing. We're just paralleling this grass line drop, throwing it up on the edge of it and working it, kind of waking it, and then gradually letting it drop as we get out toward the outer edge of the grass and then just slow rolling it right along. It's putting out a tremendous amount of flash. And this blade is so much better than an Indiana or a Colorado because it has less water resistance. You can fish it deeper. It doesn't want to ride up on you. You can keep it deep. It spins extremely fast, puts out a tremendous amount of reflection. And that blade will cut through the grass so much better. If it hits vegetation, it just, like I say, it just kind of cuts through it. What do you look for in a good bait casting rod when you're on a fixed income? Well, when I look for one, I want a rod that's lightweight, sensitive, has good backbone. And when you think about it, I think most folks want the same, plus at a good price. And for a real, one that's smooth, light, and has a good drag system, and is available in several models. Well, guess what? I've got one right here. The Bill Dance Special Edition. The rods are made of IM6 graphite, have D-ring guides, an EVA handle. They're super light and very sensitive. The reels have a drag system that are smooth as country butter and come with several of these Build Ant Special Edition rods. They're really nice. Check them out at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Whoa. 
I'll come on back here pretty soon. Look at him like a bulldog in it. He's talking about a pretty fish. That one. That's a nice one. Fat. Whew. Went home. That was one healthy fish. Yes, it was. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. Recently, Gamakatsu asked me to test one of their new hooks called the Outbar. I gave a few to my saltwater guide buddies who specialize in tarpon and snook, and I tried them on Big River Cats. You want a hook with the quickest and easiest penetration and offers extra holding power? We all discovered that the Gamakatsu Outbarb was harder to dislodge, held, and penetrated better and proved to be a great hook. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning provided by Power Pole, the original shallow water anchor. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. Bill, how much time do you spend on buying a new lure? Well, I really think a lot of expensive baits are overrated. A bass strikes whatever's available that appears to them to be forged, whether it costs $4 or 18 Like I've said before, we spend way too much time thinking about buying baits than bass do worrying about striking them. Bass are predators, not bankers. They'll never be concerned with the cost of a lure. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. I saw him come up there and hit it. I got a tiger by the tail, plain to see. Boy, fish is bigger than I thought he was. Look at that little crazy. You wanna play crazy? I'll play with you. Woo! He's a nice little. Yeah, you wanna play crazy? I'll play. Oh, look beyond it. I'll play right along with you. Hello. He wasn't far from throwing it out. That's a tough little dude right there. And healthy too. Look at that. Yes, you are. Get back out there. Crazy thing. Okay, now Bill, when it comes to spinning reels, is there one gear ratio to cover most fishing situations? Okay, now when it comes to gear ratios on a spinning reel, my choice is a 6.1 to 1. Now, I believe this reel geared with this ratio covers most fishing situations. Now here's something that's very important. Gear ratios, well, they were the flip if the spool isn't filled to at least 80 to 90% of capacity. When it's not very full, it requires more revolutions of the handle to take up line. What's going on here? Well, your lure speed 
is going to be slower when you begin your retrieve after a long cast than it'll be when it gets near your rod tip. Bottom line is, no pun intended, your lure speed increases throughout the retrieve even though your cranking action remains the same. This alone can have a major effect on your presentation and can be the deciding factor in success or failure. Hey, line size can also be a factor. Example, let's say you're using 10 pound test. The size of the spool or retrieve speed is not gonna change much during the cast. However, if you're using 20 pound test or heavier, naturally the diameter is larger. So the spool size may be reduced in half on a long cast. Therefore, the retrieve speed increases as the lure approaches your rod tip. There's another one coming right in behind it right there. Got it too. A better one too. Whoa, baby. Oh, come on back around here. Look at that big old head. Whoa, baby. Trying to get back in that moss. Whoa. Ah, strong. Get out of that grass. Mm. I've had it. Woo! Let's go. Let's go bye-bye. You ready to go home? Well, like I said earlier, that's a good question. And we've answered some good ones today. Sorry we couldn't answer them all. Maybe next time. Until then, you catch one for me. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.